that's cool. So this is my friend Jay's 1971 D28 by Martin. It's a really great guitar. Uh, he has been on the fence for a long time on whether he should sell it or not. He's an old bluegrass guy, and so for the for him, this is the perfect guitar. Um, and what's interesting is he started playing with someone whose voice works better in a more contemporary, modern kind of country sound. And so he has a Taylor Dreadnought. It seems sacrilegious to lots of people, but I get it. Uh, Taylor just has a different place, but this is his 71D28. He wants me to look it over, restring it, but just kind of give my thoughts on what it's worth, what's been done to it, what probably will be needed. Uh, so let's dig in. There are a couple things that you need to know. So I'm going to give you here are the things that you need to know about 70s Martins. They're very different than the 60s and they're very different than the 80s and they are very different than modern day Martins. So it's a good looking guitar. There are two things that I immediately noticed. I asked him if he had, if the guitar had had a neck reset and he said it may have, it may not, he's not sure. He was given this guitar from a guitar player who was, I think he was in his 90s by the time he gave it to Jay uh, and he was the original owner. So Jay got this a couple years ago. So right now, immediately I can see three things. The pick guard has been swapped. Um, so this is a newer style pick guard, and it's not quite the same size as the finish. It doesn't quite follow the rosette. It's very close, but it, it is it has been swapped. Most of these in the 70s would have been under finish, and so it would be a problem eventually. You would have to swap out the pick guard at some point. The other thing I see is there, there looks like there's a small crack that's been repaired. Very standard with the glued pick guards. So there's a crack in here that follows from where the pick guard would have curled up and made it added stress to the soundboard. And so usually there's a crack that comes here. There sometimes is a crack that goes up this way, uh, but almost always it's gonna be right in here. And the last thing I noticed is that the saddle is particularly low. Uh, there is very little relief. There's only maybe an eighth, in it, an eighth inch. It's less than an eighth of material left there. It is as low as the action is going to get. The action on the strings, so the action here isn't terrible. It's a little high, um, but it's not bad for an old bluegrass guy. So let's keep looking. So that's the top. So there is really good checking in this finish. There's a good amount of wear up here, uh, but this guitar has some really fun vibe and mojo. But yeah, you can see that that pick guard has been swapped for sure. Come down here to the headstock. This has just the coolest of super round headstocks. And so the story is that the jig that Martin used in the 60s just really started to wear out. Uh, and so maybe this, this one's not as bad. In the mid 60s and late 60s is when you see they really are just rounded off really hard. But this has an older, darker logo. This also has really great period correct uh, Grovers. So these tuners are wonderful, and the and one of the best parts of a D28 is the volute here. Uh, this is just a very iconic part of this model of a guitar. Going down the back, there's really great finish wear here on the back of the neck. And then we flow through here to the back. So this is very 70s uh, for Martin. Very brown. Very, very, very brown. Good guitar, good shape. Ooh, there's a back crack right here. Let's flip it around and see if there's a repair inside. So this crack right here, if we follow it inside, I'm not gonna be able to show it on the camera, but I can see there is a tiny dab of glue. So it looks like someone with a hypodermic needle has fixed that crack. So now the last thing we need to look at is the fret work. So let's look and see how these frets have survived. So whoever has owned this guitar has played it a lot. Uh, the strings have some dings, especially in the B and the E string, but they're not bad. If you're that concerned, I mean, you're not even really getting, you're not gonna get any noise out of them, but they are visible. Very country chords. You can see them much more than you can hear them. If you were that concerned about it, I would not recommend a refret, but I would say let's go ahead and you know crown and polish these frets. They have plenty of life left in them.
overall structurally good guitar. Uh, it does look like it needs a neck reset. Let's go ahead and restring it and then I'll play it and you'll hear it and then we'll start answering some of the other questions of what's it worth. <laughs> Okay, so while restringing this guitar, a couple things to notice. So one of the biggest ones is how low this saddle is. The next is we're gonna look at these grooves. So these have been cut in. Uh, they're not, they're pretty rugged, especially this one on the B here. But, and this one's just, that's just a lot of wear from that, from the knot on the string. Here's that crack. I was talking about between pickguard and the bridge. You can see these close shots here. So this is where the old pickguard doesn't quite line up with the new one. And it's just a smidge. Well, maybe it's better. So. And let's look at the serial number real quick. So here's the serial number. Two nine seven nine nine zero. So here I'm just going to use a lead pencil. I'm just going to draw in the lines on the nut, and so that way it gives just a little bit of graphite, a little bit of lubrication to that string. So one of the things I was taking the strings off, I felt that they were giving that kind of noise where they were getting stuck. That tick 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 tick. So this way it'll help them stay in tune better. fun example of a 1970s Martin. Now with that said, there are some things that are really good about 70s Martins. They're pretty affordable, they're pretty cool, they're the oldest Martins that most normal players could afford to buy right now. The biggest changes that happened to Martin during the 70s was that all of a sudden they started using East Indian rosewood back and sides. So that happened in 1969, uh, 1970, right around that time is when you see the full switch over to the vast majority of their guitars being East Indian rosewood back and sides. East Indian is a wonderful tone wood. It sounds really good. Uh, this is pretty typical of that period. It's just super chocolatey brown, very brown, uh, not any of the purples, a little bit of like the black, um, but overall just looks a lot different than Brazilian rosewood. It does sound different than Brazilian. I am not a huge fan of Brazilian. I know that's a shocking opinion. Uh, but for me, it's just not worth three times more for that 2% difference. So the other changes that happened to the guitars during this time, uh, the finishes changed. I don't totally know how to describe and I don't, I don't know properly what changed, but the finishes all got, they feel a little thicker. They feel a little hazy. The early 70s are much better, but by the time you get to the late 70s, most Martin finishes look pretty thick. They look pretty hazy, and in the end, they just don't have that same cool vibe from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Most of these would have had nickel tuners before this. Uh, this is in the early 70s, so you start getting to the chrome tuners, which chrome just doesn't look as cool to me when it grows older. And the last change, I didn't check in this guitar, but uh, because they stopped using Brazilian at some point, they started using, instead of maple for the bridge plate underneath inside this guitar, uh, in the 70s, they started using little pieces of Brazilian, which Brazilian sounds amazing on the back and sides, uh, but it does not do many favors 
to guitars when it becomes the bridge blade. They become a little spongy, a little boxy. Uh, so some of them, if they sound muddy, usually it's because of that Brazilian rosewood bridge plate. Any Martin pre-1984, uh, this is a huge misconception. Martin has always had truss rods in their guitars, but they did not put adjustable truss rods until 1984, 1985. You have lots of people say like, well, I wanna buy an old Martin, but I want a guitar with a truss rod. They have truss rods. They just have a set relief. And from Martin, the explanation that they had for this was that they believed that it was a way they could save their customers money that their customers didn't typically move that much, and so it would be a helpful and beneficial thing uh, to save them a little bit of money. You know, it's always helpful to have an adjustable truss rod. So that's enough about generally about 70s Martins. Let's talk about this guitar in particular. This is a good example of a 70s Martin. It sounds good, it plays pretty well. It does have a couple things that I would want to address if this was mine or if somebody was buying it, they're probably gonna notice. So it does sound really good. It has really good resonance. It's still ringing. Uh, it's a good sounding guitar. It has ebony bridge, ebony fingerboard. This reminds me very much of Neil Young. His, his D45 from the 60s is one of my just ultimate, if I could have a 60s D45, that would be an incredible feat for me in my guitar journey. But this guitar has tons of that old bluegrass vibe. Uh, it's loud, it's punchy, there's a lot of bass to it, it projects, it cuts through. Uh, so Jay, who owns this, he's a just straight bluegrass and country player, and this guitar is perfect for his style. noting on this guitar there's a crack on the back that we talked about uh, so it looks like there there isn't proper cleating inside but it looks like maybe there was a hypodermic needle used to put some glue into it it's not moving I think it's okay for now uh, but it's not technically the way that you know like Irving Sloan or those old guitar repair books it's not the way that you would have typically fixed that but it looks good there's a crack here and it seems like it's not moving between the pick guard and the bridge uh, looks like it's already been fixed. It's good to go. The saddle is fairly low and so it looks like, well, let me tell you a different thing first. So on the heel of the neck in here, there is, it looks to me like someone has already taken the neck off of this guitar once because the finish, there's just a mar, uh, there's a seam that you can see in the neck heel all the way around. Uh, and so I think possibly this neck has already been off. Uh, yeah, I believe that this neck has already been reset once. I don't think it was done to the to a deep enough angle. And so now the saddle, because it looks like the saddle is a newer bone saddle, uh, but it's down pretty low. So if you were anyone other than a straight bluegrass first position player, uh, this guitar is probably going to need a neck reset because the action is just a little high and by the time you start playing any of the open chords It's both a little hard to play so I'm, I'm feeling myself kind of flub through some stuff Action's a little high, but it's also pulling notes out of tune. It's not technically the intonation's fault, but it is that the strings are being pulled far enough that it's separating them. Uh, the other thing is there is noticeable wear on the first three frets. I am not a fan and I'm not a proponent of refretting guitars. I think much, far too often, people are uh, putting new frets in guitars that really don't need them. So I think you could do a crown and polish on all these frets. They would look good, they would sound good. So even now, there are noticeable dips, but you will not see them or feel them or hear them. So I think a lot of times it's just luthiers looking for work and they tell you that you need new frets. So overall, this is a really cool guitar. It's a true survivor from the early 70s, only has two cracks. 
uh, mild finish issues, I hope that I'm the same. When I'm 50 years old, that I only have a couple cracks and, you know, mostly original finish. That's the goal for me. Uh, so this guitar, I think, is a total winner. The, there's one thing, so it has a newer case, has a newer Geb style case. It is an import made in China case, but it's very good. But it, it doesn't have the blue Martin case, which typically that's such a selling point for 70s Martins is that people want that really cool blue case. Um, but overall, this guitar is very cool. It plays pretty well, especially for first position. Uh, I think it's a good deal. So the question now comes to value. How much is this guitar worth? And so when you look at the market, lots of people want these 70s Martins to be worth $3,000. I just don't see those numbers yet on these. I think in five or 10 years, when all of a sudden they're 60 years old. So right now this guitar is just coming up on 50 years old. Uh, or 49 years, it'll be 50 next year. But a lot of people want these guitars to be worth a lot of money, 3,000, 3,500. I just don't think the market is there on these. I think the very clean ones will bring, you know, close to 2,800, 2,900. Uh, but my gut on this is that this is a 2,200 to $2,500 guitar. Uh, it's a very good example of a guitar. Uh, but I think there are a couple things that do need to be checked out on it first. Uh, overall, I feel like anyone that has this guitar would be very happy with it. It would be a bur it would be a great companion for a singer songwriter or a lead guitar player uh, playing bluegrass. It just has so much mojo and so much vibe. Everyone loves showing up with a cool Martin in front of them. Uh, there's something about the Martin brand that just instills so much belief in yourself. Like you believe totally new things, that you are a good guitar player, that you are competent, that you have what it takes uh, when you show up with a really cool old Martin. So to me, I think this guitar is a no brainer. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. I hope that you find cool guitars that inspire you and help you make new music. If you need help, uh, feel free to reach out, ask questions. You can follow me on Instagram at Jeremy the Guitar Hunter. And if you want to support the channel, there are two really specific ways that you can do that. One, you can become a patron. Patrons get early access to videos. Uh, they get some content that other people don't get to see. And also you have much more direct contact to me. And then the second way you can support the channel is that you can buy a t-shirt. This helps me make more videos, but it also helps you become a guitar hunter who fills the world with music and friendship. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.